Today, I'm gonna teach you guys how to create your first stylized smart material in Substance Painter using only a few easy steps. If you wanna download the finished smart material for free, I'll leave a link in the description for you guys as well. Let's enjoy. So the first thing we're gonna do is start in the base color channel and do our first base layer. We're gonna choose a nice vibrant base color and you can choose whatever you want. Based off of this, I'm going for a bit of a turquoisey teal. Our second layer is going to be ambient occlusion just to get some nice vibrant shadows in the cracks. So just name the next layer ambient occlusion, add a black mask, and then right click again and add an ambient occlusion generator. Now make sure you invert the generator so it, now it's taking over the cavities and not just the edges. And then you can choose a base color. I would recommend not going for pure black as pure blacks don't really exist in real life. I went for a dark purple to contrast the turquoise and then just switch the blending mode to multiply and you've got a nice, beautiful ambient occlusion. Looks way better than just using black. And the next thing that's super important in all stylized art is adding some edge wear or edge highlights to your material. So start by creating a new layer, adding a black mask, and then we're going to add the curvature generator. There are other ways to do this, but this is the quickest way to do it in Substance Painter. A little quick trick I like to use to get the color right instantly is just to go to the base color and use the color picker and then go to your base layer and then all you have to do is just slightly desaturate it and then you'll get basically the perfect color. And you can always come back and tweak that later. There are a ton of settings that you can use to tweak the material and the edge highlights to your preference. I bring back the balance a little bit just so it's not completely blurred out. And you could also up the contrast, adjust the colors like I'm doing here. Um, there's a ton of stuff you can do, but I like to keep it nice and simple just nice, nice, light edges. Now the next thing we're going to do, it's another very important aspect of stylized art, is we're going to add a color gradient. So what we wanna do is add a new fill layer, again, a black mask, and then this time we're gonna add a position generator. If you wanna invert it, that's fine, so you can control it from the bottom, and then you can go ahead and actually take the color from the AO using the color picker, at least this is what I do, and then switch the blend mode to multiply, and you've got some nice balance in there. I always like to use the AO to complement the position gradient going from top to bottom as well. It adds some nice consistency. Okay, so this isn't bad at all, and I'm pretty sure this is where my first tutorial over a year ago left off, but there's a couple of more things we can do, or I guess one big thing we can do, and that is to add some baked artificial lighting to the material. So since we're only using the base color channel, we don't have the luxury of lighting to enhance the material and make it look better and use some extra colors. So there's a really cool baked lighting filter that we can use. All I have to do is create a new filter and then don't add a black mask, right click it, add the baked stylized lighting filter, change the blend mode to soft light like you saw there, and that's it. So now we've got some great artificial lighting coming off of the top down. And you can also simulate light in the settings coming from the ground, from the atmosphere, from everything. As I mess with the sun intensity dial here, you can kind of see a better idea of exactly how it works. But I would recommend using this filter on every single material that you do in the future. It's incredible and one of my favorite parts of Substance Painter. So this is the final result. It looks so much better than my previous one. And this is such a great base material that you can use to drag and drop right onto your other materials just to get a good quick head start. It saves a ton of time. Speaking of which, let's talk about creating a smart material for this so you can reuse it. Just simply create a folder, uh, name it whatever you want, drag and drop all of your layers into it. And then all you have to do is right click on the folder itself and then create smart material. And it'll add a smart material into that smart material shelf. You'll see it just appear right there. 
Now I love how versatile these are, so let's go to a project I'm working on and quickly revamp it with a drag and drop smart material that we just made. And it looks just like that. If you switch the color channel, it looks great. It's a cool little start. Um, there's a few things you can fix up, but that's the best part about procedural, procedural material making is that I can go back, turn off this baked lighting, I can change the gradient because the gradients you know, might be a little too extreme for what I want or what the client wants. Um, you can adjust the edge highlights, everything. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. This was a free tutorial from the 3D Artist Coloring Book. I've got a ton of other cool courses in there as well. So I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. And again, this download is completely free. So I'll leave another link in the description for where you can download the smart material. Thanks guys.